Why on earth does everyone make such a big deal about belly fat? I mean, it seems like it's just this over-marketed, super trendy thing to talk about. And the truth is, it is. All over the internet, people blast belly fat this, belly fat that. Let's talk real here. Okay, what is the difference between the belly fat that you see on your belly versus the belly fat that's really a problem? Okay, the visceral fat. Okay, so that's what we'll talk about in this video. Okay, there's a big difference between the unsightly adipose tissue, that is the subcutaneous fat that jiggles and is unsightly, and the visceral fat, which is like the pot belly and stuff like that. Big difference. So we'll discuss the difference between the two in this video. Then we'll discuss why some people develop more visceral fat than others. And then we'll talk about a couple quick ways that you can hopefully reduce the amount of visceral fat. But largely this is gonna be very educational so that you can learn what to avoid and what to eat more of. Please do hit that red subscribe button and then also hit that bell icon and turn on notifications. That way you never ever miss our daily educational videos. So please do that, it helps us out a ton. And then after this video, you may wanna check out Magic Spoon. Magic Spoon is a low carb, also keto friendly cereal. Now the reason that I like them is because I always loved cereal growing up and these guys allow me to enjoy cereal now from time to time without feeling like I'm totally breaking my diet. So I highly, highly recommend you check them out. They now have some new flavors like peanut butter and honey nut, and this stuff is sweetened with allulose, which is a completely low calorie sweetener, and it's super awesome because it serves as a prebiotic. So point is, really cool stuff and allows you to have some cereal and feel like a kid again. So check them out after you watch this video down below. So I had to start this video off with some fear mongering. Why is visceral fat so bad? Okay, let's talk about a few reasons. The first one is what is called atherogenic dyslipidemia. Okay, what happens is when you have a high amount of visceral fat, you end up leaking what are called triglycerides into your bloodstream more. There's a lot of different reasons why, but the point is you have triglycerides that leak into the bloodstream more. And there's a study that was published in the journal Arteriosclerosis that indicated that when visceral fat levels were high because triglycerides were higher, it showed that visceral fat was a stronger predictor of overall cardiovascular disease than obesity itself showing that even if someone was super overweight and super, let's say, flatty and fat, that didn't mean that they would end up having an issue with their heart. But having higher levels of visceral fat very clearly did show that they were at higher risk. Now, the reason behind this is quite simple. Those that had higher visceral fat had higher levels of what are called very low density lipoproteins or VLDL, basically the very bad form of LDL. Not all LDL is bad, just the very low density forms are bad. And these turn very dense by being exposed to triglycerides because it affects what are called cholesterol ester transfer proteins. Okay, complicated thing, but basically because of the triglycerides, it turns the cholesterol into a dense form, which can attribute to atherosclerosis and make someone have, well, cardiovascular disease. Okay, let's move into the next one, hypertension. Okay, we've all heard of a fatty liver before, but did you know that there's such thing as a fatty kidney? Okay, remember, the visceral fat is what is packed in our abdomen and it's surrounding our organs, whereas traditional subcutaneous fat is just regular fat hanging around. Okay, well, when you have that visceral fat surrounding your kidneys, you can actually develop a fatty kidney too. Interesting study that looked at over 2,900 people found that 30% of them had what is called ectopic fat around their kidneys. Their kidneys were surrounded with fat, and it also showed that when the kidneys were fat, there was a higher blood pressure correlation, showing that yes, it can affect hypertension. So there's another reason. Now let's move into insulin resistance for a second. Insulin resistance is where your cells no longer accept insulin very well. So you have a hard time taking up glucose, you have a hard time taking up nutrients because they're just not accepting insulin. Okay, you've heard of type two diabetes before, similar thing. A study that was published in the journal Diabetes Care took a look at 520 people for six to 10 years it showed that visceral fat ended up being the strongest indicator of type two diabetes. Above obesity, above lifestyle, above all these other things. Visceral fat, simple, clear picture that these people were higher risk for insulin resistance and type two diabetes. An interesting way to look at this picture is to look at sumo wrestlers. Okay, sumo wrestlers are largely considered obese, right? Okay, well, when they're active in their wrestling careers, they usually have pretty good insulin sensitivity. They're not insulin resistant and they have lower levels of visceral fat. But then as their careers come to an end and they're more sedentary, they notice that, hey, their visceral fat levels go up. And they also notice that their insulin resistance goes up. Okay, so yes, exercise plays a role here, but the point is, is just being fat isn't always the problem. It's what kind of fat it is. 
And then quickly, I'll touch on cancer for a second, but I don't like to go that rabbit hole because I'm not necessarily an expert in that field. Okay, but visceral fat is linked to an increase in what are called fibroblast growth factors, which are associated with epithelial cell creation that can turn malignant. So simple point is visceral fat can lead to the growth factor that potentially grows cancer. So we just have to be careful there. Okay, lots of scary things with visceral fat, but what makes you at risk for visceral fat? That's what we really wanna know. Well, first of all, men are twice as likely to develop visceral fat than women. In fact, when men gain weight, there's usually a fairly proportionate uh, increase of visceral fat with their overall weight that's increased. Women, not necessarily the case. Now, interestingly enough, in men that are very low testosterone, they end up having a high level of visceral fat too. So it could be something to do with the androgen receptors. Now, interesting point on top of that, men that have very high testosterone levels also have higher levels of visceral fat as demonstrated by athletes that take performance enhancers. A lot of times they'll end up with like kind of these bloated bellies. Well, a lot of times that is visceral fat, but you also see hyperlipidemia. You see high levels of triglycerides, higher levels of different kinds of lipids in the blood in people that take performance enhancers because it is affecting that. Now, additionally, there was a study that was published in the Journal of Endocrinology Metabolism that took a look at women that were on some form of testosterone therapy for many different reasons, but in this case, there was an increase in visceral fat in those women. So the point is, we kind of have a set point with where our testosterone should be. If we're too low, visceral fat develops. If we're too high, visceral fat develops. So it's very important to try to keep your body in check that way. The other piece we have to talk about is stress. Now, you may have seen, there was a documentary, I can't remember where it was or what it was called, but it did talk about this particular thing. Now, there was a study that this was built on. Okay, it looked at primates, and it found that primates that were of the subordinate class in a group, okay, they were not the alpha, they were subordinate monkeys, well, they had higher levels of stress, and it was measured by their cortisol levels. They were what are called hypercortisolemia. So high levels of cortisol, well, they ended up having high levels of visceral fat. So subordination equals stress, stress equals cortisol, cortisol equals visceral fat. So if you're chronically stressed and your life is just a giant stress pot, there's a very good chance that you're gonna have a higher ratio of visceral fat compared to your regular abdominal fat, which by the way is usually easier to get rid of than visceral fat. But then we have to remember like, okay, our bodies aren't just gonna create something random with no purpose at all. Visceral fat has a purpose. I mean, it's there, right? It's not just a total enemy. So let's really play devil's advocate for a second and look at that. Okay, the main purpose of visceral fat is to stop pathogens. Now, one of the problems with visceral fat is that it leaks inflammatory cytokines. It leaks things that trigger inflammation in the body. Why is that? Is it just because it's bad? No, it's because it's doing its job. In the right amount, visceral fat will leak the cytokines. It'll have the inflammatory response that stops pathogens from leaking in through the gut and then getting into the bloodstream. Okay, so the visceral fat has what are called fat-associated lymphoid clusters. Not the most attractive name, but what they do is pretty cool, okay? So if they see a pathogen coming in from a leaky gut or from being sick, they will trigger an immune response and they will fight that, okay? And that's good to some degree. Now imagine you had a bunch of visceral fat. It's gonna leak a bunch of the immune response, a bunch of the cytokines, a bunch of the warriors in your body. You could see how that could really cause a problem, right? It's a big deal if you have a lot of inflammation all at once. Now we also have another thing called the omentum, which is like a little sheath that surrounds our organs as well. Okay, this has what are called milky spots that do a very similar thing. Not gonna go down the immune system rabbit hole, but that's the point of the visceral fat. We only need a little bit. We don't need a bunch of it. So then you ask yourself, all right, this is cool, Thomas. I, I get it, visceral fat's bad, but how the heck do I get rid of it? Okay. Well, okay, weight loss, yes, that's generally going to do something, but it's not always the end all be all. You can lose weight and lose weight in the wrong areas. You lose that visual fat, but you don't lose that visceral fat. There was a study that was published in the journal Diabetes Care that I found fascinating. Because I'm a big proponent of a Mediterranean style diet, whether it's Mediterranean low carb or even Mediterranean higher carb. I just feel the fatty acid profile of Mediterranean is great. So the study that was published in Diabetes Care looked at pretty equal macronutrient profiles except the two groups had different fats, okay? So one group had 8% of their total fat come from monounsaturated fats, like olive oil and avocado oil. The other group had 23% of their total fats coming from monounsaturated fats. So essentially three times the amount of olive oil and avocado oil than the other group. Well, no weight change whatsoever between the two groups, okay? Neither, one's, neither group lost weight, 
but the group that had more monounsaturated fats, like olive oil and avocado oil, had a significant reduction in their visceral fat. So for whatever reason, whether it's gene expression, whether it's specific uncoupling protein activation, there was more burning of visceral fat on a Mediterranean style diet, or at least the fats associated with it, than the other group. Additionally, the Journal of Clinical Investigation took a look at sweetened beverages. This is really fascinating. Okay. So if they looked at individuals that had 25% of their total calories coming from beverages, which by the way is not that hard to do when you look at most sweetened beverages, they found that those that consumed sweetened beverages sweetened with fructose ended up gaining visceral fat or didn't lose visceral fat, whereas the group that had beverages with glucose did lose some of their visceral fat. So even though they consumed the same amount of calories, they didn't lose weight, the glucose group ended up losing visceral fat and the fructose group did not. What that shows us is that fructose goes through what's called de novo lipogenesis or triggers de novo lipogenesis more, which means that you could be storing more potential body fat there, uh, especially in the way of visceral fat. So in essence, limit the fructose, at least if you're in a caloric uh, surplus, right? If you're gonna eat more calories, eat more calories from glucose, not from fructose in that particular case, or better yet, just lessen those two altogether. And the last thing that's very, very important, and I hope you've stuck with me through this video because this is a big thing, is training in a fasted state, working out in a fasted state. Okay, fasting in and of itself does activate the specific gene transcription that's going to allow you to utilize more of that visceral fat. That's one of the reasons I love intermittent fasting to begin with. But you can expedite everything by doing a little bit of mild training in a fasted state. So if you don't already work out in the morning before you eat or in as much of a fasted state as you possibly can, that's probably one of your most active ways that you can help reduce the visceral fat levels within your body. Okay, so wake up in the morning, have your coffee with no cream or anything like that, go to the gym, do your workout, go for a walk, and a lot of the fat that you will be utilizing will be transferred in from the visceral fat tissue. Probably one of the quickest things that you can do. Anyhow, thank you for watching this video, and I will see you in tomorrow's video.